Hello all, welcome to the Angular 2 example session of Federica, this is Gary and we will be talking about some of the examples of how to use Angular with an application development for the client and we'll be doing a live demonstration of a project as well as we'll be looking at some code examples of how you can create an application with Angular 2. So let's get started for this particular session and the agenda for this particular session is we'll be talking about what is Angular 2 in a brief. We'll also look at grocery list demo project. We'll be doing a grocery list demo project at this particular point of time in this particular session. And we will also discuss employee management project and contact management project, which is already coded. We'll not be demonstrating that, but we'll definitely have a look at the project structure and look at how we can code and what is the end result of these projects. All right, great, so what is Angular 2? Angular 2, simply put, extends static HTML into dynamic HTML to create a single page application. Angular 2 is a framework which helps you build scalable and complex applications in the browser, web-based application, and as well as beyond, which means mobile-based applications as well. It started off as Angular JS, but 9 from version 2, it has been renamed to Angular, and going forward, it will be referred to as Angular. So version 2, version 3, version 4, version 5, going forward would be termed as Angular 2, Angular version 4, Angular version 5, and so on and so forth. At this particular point of time, Angular version 2 is going on, and it will be following a semantic versioning of Node.js. It is an open side, uh, a client side open source JavaScript framework. It is being maintained by Google, but it started off not uh, as a Google product, but a Google framework, but it was actually created as an open source project by two people, which was later on taken by Google and then they renamed it to AngularJS and then the traction happened. Now they have upgraded to version two and there are a lot of things happening with Angular at this particular point of time. One of the biggest thing is, you can write ES6 code or TypeScript code for any Angular application, which introduces something called as classes. It introduces fat arrow functions. A lot of things are happening with JavaScript, along with which Angular supports TypeScript development, which means that you can now have statically typed application during development, which actually helps you create very good scalable error-free applications when you are working with client side. The biggest problem with the client side application is it's, it's the most abused and most often than not it ends up as unmaintainable code but with Angular it is not going to be so and we'll look at how easy it is to create maintainable code and how good it is when it comes to Angular 2. It uses component based feature provided by JavaScript or by HTML where you can create your own components. What I mean by that is you will be able to extend web components using JavaScript to create your own custom components like dev, span, anchor tag, etc. Each of these components would have its own functionalities and they would behave the way you tell it to behave. And Angular 2 makes it a lot easier, a lot, lot easier to create web components and work with components to create a scalable application. It does that by embracing new HTML standards, JavaScript standards, and CSS to go ahead, create a chunk of maintainable application, unit testable application, because remember, Angular 2 is created with unit testing or test-driven development first in mind. And that's one of the biggest advantages with Angular 2, that you would be able to create testable applications whenever you are working with Angular. So what is it that creates an Angular 2 application? Let's have a look at creating an Angular 2 application in some detail with an example of grocery list. Web app where we'll be creating a list of grocery items to be stocked. And in case it is finished or in case it is taken care of or it is stocked, we would be able to make a choice that it has been stocked. And if you want to delete an item, you can delete an item or add an item if you want to add to the grocery list. It's, it's a very simple application which is quite similar to a to-do example but it, it is a little, little different from that. So we are using a different concept here of grocery list rather than a to-do application and we'll be working cross with that in, in this particular section. So let's look at what is required for a grocery list web application in Angular 2. 
So the architecture of the grocery list application is going to look something like this. You would have a web application in one end. You would have a database in one end which will store the data of the grocery list. And in the server you would be able to make changes, update the data and so on and so forth and provide it to the client. So this is going to be your application architecture in a very high level bird's eye view. And this is what we are going to try and do. Great. So what are we using? We are using, we, we are actually going to use in the backend MongoDB and ExpressJS along with Node.js for the server side implementation and the database. In case of client side, we'll be using Angular as well as Bootstrap. Bootstrap is used for styling and Angular is used for the client side web application development. Let's actually use this in a live example and see how it is coded. When we finish our application, it will look something like this. It will have an input box and a list of items. Each of the items can be selected to be finished or can be deleted. And a new item can be added with the input box. That's what is going to be the end result of this particular project. So let's get going and let's start the application development for grocery list. All right, I have some few set of files here, which are basically the bootstrap or the starter seed or the quick start seed of Angular that I have downloaded and I'm using. And in this list, it will have the client application for Angular as well as the basic requirement for development of Angular 2 application. This quick start can be downloaded from your Angular website. Go to docs. Go to quick start, click on quick start seed. You can either clone it with the GitHub link or you can go ahead and download it directly out here. It will download, just extract these files into a particular folder and it should look something like this without the server folder here. I've created the server folder which has some server files which we are going to use as a pre-coded material and we will not be working on the Node.js section, but we'll be focusing on the Angular 2 section. So what files are there in this particular section? One of the first files that I would want to touch upon is the package.json, which keeps track of the Node.js packages, both dependencies as well as development dependencies. The difference between both of them is that dependencies are needed for production. You also have a end-to-end -end testing configuration file and a unit testing configuration file that comes with Angular 2 Quick Start Seed. It also has a live server which helps you restart your server, refresh your browser, do automatic compilation. Everything is taken care of by browser sync here. So it's a development server that we are going to use, a partial development uh, a server that will help you at least get started with development in terms of Angular 2. You would not really have to work across with a production level server out here. The second thing is if you notice a basic test configuration for end-to-end -end testing is already provided. Along with that is also provided spec files which are the spec files for your application. So a basic spec file for end-to-end -end testing is also provided here. If you notice, I have actually put the source folder into the client. The quick start seed is not going to have the client folder, but it is actually going to have the source folder within which it is going to have the app folder and other files that you are seeing right now. I have put that within the client folder so that I'm able to differentiate the client project as well as the server project. That's what I have done. The only thing I've changed is some amount of pathing change in the server as well as in my package.json. I've not installed any dependencies. We will definitely do that and uh, get the project started. But if you notice, I have an app folder that is nothing in it. We'll be going ahead and working cross with Angular 2 development within that. And I have a few files. One is index.html, styles.css, which will have all the styles. System.js.config.js, we'll talk about this in a moment's time. And ts.config.json. System.js.config.js will map all the dependencies into a particular variable which you can use in your codes to import it. Remember there are two types of modularity within Angular 2. One is ES6 based modularity which provides file based modularity 
and one is Angular modules which provide feature-based chunks or feature-based isolation for a group of ES6 files. So that is what uh, the tools uh, modularity that is available for your application. Now this particular system js.config.js is imported in index.html and it is used for mapping our dependencies. If you notice we are importing a file called as app slash main.js. Now this file has not been created. This file is the bootstrap file that we are going to use along with which we have some node modules pathing which maps to some polyfills uh, zone.js which helps in change detection system.source.js which helps in providing modularity for your ES6 files. If you notice tsconfig.json is also there. This is a file, a config file that is being used for application development with TypeScript and it is a TypeScript compiler. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript which compiles to JavaScript whatever version or whatever target you mention. So you can go ahead compile it to ES5, you can use common JS or system JS for your file modularity, the mode resolution is node. We are going to create a source map as well. We are going to allow decorators use in this particular section and we are going to use the libraries ES 2015 and DOM and we are going to compulsorily provide types to our application objects else it will start throwing errors and we are not going to suppress any errors. That's what the last two lines mean. So let's quickly get started with our application development. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a very simple structure for the application and then start coding with it. So the first thing I need to create is main.js file. Remember your main.js file actually comes from main.ts files which is an extension for TypeScript file and that is going to get compiled to a main.js file. So I'm going to create a main.ts file which is going to bootstrap our application module. Remember our application module is an Angular module which is going to be a chunk of ES6 files. So an application module or an Angular module is different from ES6 modularity that is provided by system.js or common.js. Let's also create app.module.ts which is going to be our application module and the goal that we are going to work on is We are going to create a component called as my application which is going to have the entire application coded into it. Yes, you can create child components within my app where you can create your own custom components or use your HTML components within my app to create the dynamic functionality. You can definitely do that and create a component tree like a DOM tree and work across with that but definitely our goal at this particular point of time is to create a root application component called as my app. So I'm going to create a folder called as component and within this particular folder I am going to create an app folder where my actual component.ts is going to come into sight. Now this particular app.component.ts is going to have our my app component. The second component I need to create is the grocery items component. So I'm going to create a folder called as items and I'm going to create a file called as items.component.ts. Now that that is created, I am also going to need something called as services. So I'm going to create a folder called as services here. In this services folder, I'm going to create another folder called as items and I'm going to create a particular service called as item.service.ts. Remember this service is absolutely beneficial when you want to keep some common functionality or some kind of data to be stored and that definitely is going to help us a lot here. So I'm going to keep it out here and we will use this when we really need it. We're not going to create it right now. We'll just bootstrap the application, see that it's working and then continue with our application development. That's what we are going to do right now so that we do not err during the application development which is quite possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is 
how I'm going to bootstrap my application. During bootstrap, I'm going to go ahead create a bootstrap of my module, my application module or my Angular module. So before doing that, let me just show you what will happen if I directly start this. If I go ahead and select this, all right, in a moment's time, the Angular core is definitely going to say that I'm not able to find Angular core. And uh, that is because I do not have any of the dependencies installed. So what I'm going to do right now is Meanwhile, we go ahead create our application. I'm going to install all the dependencies for the project by doing npm install. Remember, this is going to check for package.json, install all the dependencies, dependencies into this particular project. Now that we have kept it for installation, let's quickly go ahead and just bootstrap this particular application, run it. It would not need a server at this particular point of time. We'll talk about the server a little later. All right, great. So we have bootstrap our module, which is not that fantastic, but that's okay. We are going to create it right now. So I'm going to go into app module and I'm going to create an ng module or an angular module here. Remember angular module is used for declaration of all the dependencies in imports, declarations of all the components directive pipes that you create within the module so that they are available within the module and bootstrap a single root component or the MyApp component so that that particular component triggers off a series of instantiation if it uses child components or child directives. So that is going to be our goal right now. Meanwhile, let's look at what is the stage. We're almost done. All right, we are done with the insulation. Let me quickly go ahead, close this once and open it again, just to check if the node modules folder is there and we are not making any mistake with great so the node modules folder is there it definitely has that and let's go ahead and continue with our development here i'm going to import angular module from core The second thing I'm going to import is forms common module. I'm going to import the browser module as well from platform browser. I'm going to import HTTP. from HTTP and I am also going to import my component that I'm going to create. Great, so we have created that. Let me also create the app 
component import and let us go ahead and use the annotation which takes an object as the metadata it has a requirement of imports metadata of exports if any I have declarations of components directive pipes declarations of providers or injectables and bootstrap of a single component let me just without a semicolon export the class app module that is the one that will be needed and I am going to go ahead and get everything ready so import modules I'm going to declare the app component and bootstrap the app component as well. We have not created that, but we'll definitely do that. It says declaration expected, but we will go ahead and do that right now. Now that we have created a module, let's go ahead and create the root component, which has the my app. Let's do a simple check that our application structure is right and our application is running. And then let's go ahead and continue with any other things. Remember in your quick start, this particular section is going to be there, but I, I just wanted to demonstrate that, you know, we already, what is the process of bootstrapping and creating NNG module and what are the requirements for that so definitely this is something that is going to be available so use it uh, to your benefit uh, as much as possible I'm quickly going to go ahead and create an import from angular core and I'm going to import my component my component annotation the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the component all right a basic component is ready let's see if we have imported that those errors now have technically gone off and we are actually ready with our application here great so we have bootstrap the app module we have gone ahead and created the app module we have bootstrap our component we have gone ahead and created a component with my app and this particular my app just has a test so let's run this particular application and see if it really works so the command I'm going to use is npm start I'm going to keep it to compile and simultaneously I'm also going to open up my browser so that I run my application from the server and not from the development version so that we are able to use a HTML from my server so let's go ahead type server slash server dot JS just hold on a moment I'll talk about what is there in the server it says cannot get that's because of the pathing okay it said port already in use it should not give an error now let's do one thing let's go the other way around let's start this first and now let us go ahead and keep that running so that compilation is automatic for our code here great so let me go to localhost 3000 and we have our test so our application is running it's, it's a working code we will go ahead extend our code from here I'm going to use bootstrap for styling and that's what uh, I'm going to take care of and I'm going to follow and uh, let's see how how clean we can be in terms of using classes we'll try and use bare minimal classes for the sake of demonstration here I'm going to create my basic um, DOM structure and create the items component so that we are able to repeat that particular items component and work across with that great so let's do that this is all that I'm going to use with my my app I'm going to create an items component and when we create the items component we'll have a look at what is it that it is going to provide so let's go ahead and create that component as well
very quick bootstrap so that we do not spend a lot of time on that. We are going to use a template. The template file is ready. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and create the form tags so that we have the input box there. This particular form needs nothing but some styling and a capture of submit, right? So I'm going to create a directive called a submit, which is going to catch the event submit. All right, let's check our form whether it really works here. We'll also create a very simple injectable. I'm going to use a service here and I'm going to create, I'm going to import that particular service and declare it in the providers. So that it's going to be available for the whole application. Great. So I just need to do a very small thing. Great, this is all I, I, that I need and the final thing I might want to do is declare it so that I don't have declaration errors and I'm going to get it from component. We should have a very simple input box coming in from there. That was so naive of me. I had completely missed the components folder. So form is ready. Let's quickly go ahead and work on other sections. And let's create a repeatable item here. We have something in the database. So now we will need our section of services and the section of the component functions. So we will definitely have to look at the uh, server side code right now. Let's see what's there in the server side code. It's a very simple server which uses the APIs from index as well as item. The index serves the index.html, the route slash item serves the APIs or the REST APIs for the grocery list. My application is being served so that it can be used with development or third party domain as well. Right now I'm not doing that, but you can definitely do that with this particular code. I'm also going ahead using middlewares to go ahead use the body parser and go ahead serve this particular folder called as node modules and the client source to serve my index storage table. The final is I'm going to map it to slash API slash the items routes which are there. So let's look at what are the items routes. The items routes are list of items which gets the list of items from the database, this one. And it will also have a single item that can be fetched. You can also go ahead add an item. You can also go and delete an item with the item ID, you can update an item with an item ID with this particular section and that is being exported as a router and you are importing it from your server as routes slash items. If you look at the index.js, it has nothing but it just serves the index.html. Remember Angular 2 is a single page application and that's the reason why we are using that. Great, so that 
is as simple as a server a very very small server not a lot with it there is no authentication just to serve our purpose of getting the data to and fro so let's go ahead and create my item service so that i am able to trigger off my http request to all these files here and then we'll go ahead use that from the component for that we'll have to create a very simple type here called as item so that we do not falter on the type of item that is being sent to and fro from our angular application to the server and from the server back to our angular application so let's let's go ahead and create that as well A very simple class that can be used as a type, a custom type. So I'm going to use a very simple set of four functions and I'm going to use the same thing in my constructor as well. But let me first create the functions here and then we'll go ahead and use that. Great, add item is a function that takes just a title, right? So it's it's a string. So what we are going to do is we are going to keep that manipulation in the component. In the service, we are just going to handle the new item. So we are going to get the new item completely, which is going to be of the type item. We'll quickly go ahead, create a post request to item we have to send the item as well we have to send the headers yes headers we have not created the headers so let's create the headers as well I'm going to create the header So that should take care of my add and update. A very, very simple call, nothing great. We'll do the same with the delete item. I'm going to get ID as any. Sorry about that, that was my error.
just to differentiate. Great, there is nothing else remaining in this. Let's quickly go ahead and create a component there. In this section, we are going to repeat the items that we are going to get from an HTTP call during the using ng ornament and we'll repeat that with a checkbox, the title, as well as a button which will on click go uh, will go and trigger delete item and delete the items from the server by using the service. That's what I'm going to do right now. All right, seems like this is all that we need. Checkbox, name, a button to delete. So we are adding, we are updating, we are deleting, and we are displaying that out here. The get request will be done with our JavaScript here. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. They should get the list. Let's create the ad as well. They should take care of that. We have two more functions, update item and delete item, correct? So let's go ahead, create them as well. So update item is going to get the item of the type item. Delete is going to get the ID. Great, so let's let's also trigger that off. In case of delete, I'm going to get back the data and I'm going to check whether the data.n is equal to one. If it is so, then I'm going to repeat and splice off that particular item. If it's not, if it's zero, then I don't do anything. So at this particular point of time, I'm just going to check whether it's, it's true or false, whether uh, the modification or deletion happened or not. So I'm going to say that my items is equal to this dot items so that we are able to manage that as well. The second thing I'm going to do is this dot items service dot delete item and I'm going to pass the ID dot subscribe we are going to get the data and we are going to check if my 
data dot n equal to true. I'm going to do a follow, check which is the one, and I would say if that particular item is dot underscore ID is equal to the ID, then I would go ahead and do item start splice and splice of whatever comma one. So I'm going to write the statement as let i is equal to zero i less than items dot length and i plus plus so that should take care of that and i need to check that if the item i of id is equal to i of that so this should do I'm just splicing off that particular one which is similar to underscore ID or the ID of that particular section the final one a simpler one I'm going to trigger off with This should take care of things. Great. So let's let's quickly go back and see what is the result. Let's see if we have an error. It doesn't seem like it threw an error. Ouch, I have some CSS problems here. Okay, let Okay, it says that the URL is wrong, which is also what I think. should take care of it. Great. So that was the grocery list. Let's quickly go back and have a look at some sessions here. So we just had a look at how we can use services, how we can use the database, how we can go ahead, work across with uh, the application and go ahead, create the application with types as well. So that was about grocery list. Let's quickly go into the next demonstration here. We'll not be working on that, but we'll quickly look at the code, what it is all about. And we'll also look at a new API here. So the second example is employee management and we will be talking about employee management in a superficial way where you can where when you open this particular application it shows a list of top employees when you click on the top employee it shows the details in the another section there will be a tab where you can click on that particular tab get into the list of employees if you want you can delete the employee if you want you can click on the employee edit the employee as well as look at the details of the employee or if you want you can add the employee so it's, it's, a, it's a complete simple employee management section where it is put into one single chunk without a database right without a database which is using a section or an api called as web api web uh, uh, which is available with angular 
And what we are going to do is we are going to use that particular API in memory data API to keep the data in the memory and work with it as if it was a complete object or work with this with it as if it was a complete database and we'll be going ahead doing a delete update on that particular object itself. So it'll work as a memory uh, database for the browser. So let's quickly look at that particular section um, in a quick nutshell. If you notice, I am still using the same quick start at this particular point of time, it doesn't have a server file. I'm going to close all my applications that I was using before for the previous project so that there is no confusion here. And I'm also going to close this. I'm also going to close other quick start. So this is the employee management section, which is the quick start seed. And it has almost similar system js.config.js. It has index, bsconfig, everything is there. The only thing that is different is the project and the only other thing that is different is the server folder is not there because we are going to use the in-memory object as a database using the data service. So that's exactly what we are going to do. In my app folder, if you notice, it starts with main.ts to bootstrap this particular module. Then it bootstraps the module which has quite a few requirements and components coming in. I have a router module also. We have used rods in this. I have an employee service which allows me to make changes to that particular object and an employee search component which will go ahead provide me with what uh, with an autocomplete option for a search option there. If you notice I'm using something called as in-memory web API module for root. Now this is exactly what I was talking about. It uses an in-memory data service and it allows you to go ahead work with it as if it was a database. It provides a mock of delay of 600 milliseconds in this particular case. Let's quickly go ahead and run the application and then see what are the components that have been used in this particular section. So I'm going to type npm start and start this particular application. Great, so if I click on each of them, it will go to that particular section, it will allow me to save, it will come back, if you notice the save has been created. If you want, uh, you can also search, you can select that particular person, you can make a change, save, you can come back and you can click on the employees it will give you the list of employees so this is in the employee.component where it will provide me the list of all the employees i can go ahead delete a particular employee or click on the employee to have look at the details and i can also go ahead do a save on that and i can also add a new employee and I can also delete that particular employee. So great, so that was the employee management list. This is the dashboard section. This is the employee component. Let's look at what is there in that. So in the dashboard section, it's a very simple component that uses an HTML called as dashboard. It just goes ahead, gets a list of employees, the top employees, and it slices with that. When you click on that particular employee, it will go to the detail using that particular link and the detail is in the slash detail employee ID and the second thing that you might want to look at is the routing component which is a module by routing module which is a module by itself the first one is the dashboard which we saw the second one is the details which have needs the ID and the third one is a list of employees and that is exactly what uh, these routes are matched to Let's quickly go ahead and look at what the object is all like. If you notice, the object is a very simple object which returns that particular object as which runs a create DB uh, database which, which will work as a database. So that's, that's what is going to be used there. Great. So that being said, I am going to use this object from within my employee detail and the employee detail has very simple APIs. It will check any kind of, it is going to go ahead, get the parameter. According to the parameter is going to check and provide the details. It is also going to allow me to save the detail. If you make a change, 
or it will allow me to go back exactly what we looked at let's look at how the HTML looks like in case of employee detail it's a very simple thing which has a label with the ID and it is going to provide me with the name allow me to go ahead edit the name save and go back section the other one is the employee list where it is going to repeat that particular employee and if that particular employee is it is going to repeat that and if that particular employee is clicked it is going to be shown as the selected employee section so when you click on that selected employee section it will go to the detail section with the ID of that selected employee that is what it is going to do let's quickly look at go to detail what go to detail does and if you notice my employee dot component dot ts go to detail it routes with that selected employee dot ID to that particular slash detail on select it is going to show and assign the selected employee and during the start with the delete option it is going to go ahead delete that specific employee and return and reassign the filtered ones and the, the, this is an alternate and if you don't want to do a splice filtering is another alternative and add employee is going to add a new employee that's exactly what will be done in case of get employees it is going to get the list of employees that are there so this, this was a very simple um, structure if notice all uh, HTML is in one folder, services are in one folder, you have your components and modules, everything in one single folder. This is definitely a small application and that would suffice for that particular application structure. But what if your application is really scaled up and you really want to work with a, a big application which might uh, need some amount of scaling? And that's when you might want to choose an application structure which will have components each of the components put into specific sections where user will have user section in case of components and so on and so forth that is something that you can work on so let's quickly go back and see what we can do next in our session today so contact list management is the third section contact list manager is the third uh, demo we are going to have a look at so let me quickly start this and let's look at the end result. I'm going to start my server and I'm going to start the server with port number 9001. So let me go back. So if you notice it has a list of um, users I can go ahead and search for them I can disable a particular user enable a particular user directly in line I can edit a particular user and I can go back enable it great so I can have I can also go ahead and add a user directly from there and in my users section I can go ahead log in and I will, will be able to go ahead and get So that was the demonstration of the end and result. Let's quickly look at what is the models and the routes. If you notice, I've used routes for registration, login. I have very specific sections for delete, edit, and everything. I have specific sections for admin as well as create and edit for uh, the user management as well. So this was about the routes that I have in my section. I also have some routes that I have created which is there within 
within our route section so there is quite a list administration has a list as well as edit option similarly for the users i have a section which is admin which will have only admin sections user will have only user sections the other ones are the main login and registration and the common ones would be within the common sections Great, so that was uh, the folder structure that is recommended for a scalable application. And uh, definitely these things would be covered uh, in our sessions with Angular 2. I really invite you to go ahead, get into details of Angular 2 and work across with a scalable application structure, which we'll be talking about in these sessions. We'll be talking about components and component metadata in quite some detail. We'll be talking about services, dependency injection, injectables how to create injectables or manually as well in in quite some detail and we'll definitely work on how to create custom directives and pipes of your own so that if there is something missing in angular you can create that particular functionality apart from that we also focus a little bit on jasmine and unit testing and that's something which we keep in store so that there is a lot of test driven development for client side applications as well Great. All right. Again, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your patience. Any, any questions? Great. So thank you very much. I really hope to see you in one of the sessions and look forward for a very interactive session there. See you uh, with the Dreka Angular 2 session. In case you want the demo codes, you can contact the support team at support at edreka.co. And in case you want to contact the sales team for the session details, you can contact them at sales at edreka.co. I will see you all there. You all have a nice day ahead. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!